Okay, good afternoon and welcome to Shulchan Aruch Yomi. Today we are learning Simon Yudzayin and Orachayim. Um, it's a monumentous uh, event over here. Uh, we have 17, this is the 17th Simon we've done, we're doing. It's really exciting. And 17 is not such a special number, just whatever. 17 is a lot. We've done a lot. And... This is a short simon, only three sif, only three halachos, uh, but it's very fundamental. This simon is one of the most fundamental ones in all of Hilkos Sitzis, and you're not going to want to miss the Ian here, where I talk about really further elaborate on the real hidden purpose behind the mitzvah of Sitzis, um, to answer a lot of questions that are shown him, uh, to fit, fit everything together. Um, I really think explains a lot of different different chazal but let's jump right into it um alif afagav the chsevur isem also the simon yuzai mihem chayom besitzis who are the people that are obligated to wear sitzis so alif says afagav the chsevur isem also you have to well, see it's summa chayom besitzis a blind person even though he can't see the sitzis he still chayom to wear sitzis as long as he's a man his nation is rabbi meshar tachasibo there's an extra word asher tachasibo right the dilim tassel like arba kind of so it's called Asher Tachasev. It's extra words. Krad or Isim also, an extra word, Pazak or Isim also, which seemingly is superfluous also. It's the Rech Lemaik, so it's Laila, come to tell you. One person, one Pazak comes to include, and one come, Pazak comes to exclude. So the Gemara says that um, it's better to include. We have two two things. We have uh, Ksus Laila, or pajamas, let's say. And we also have uh, the garments of a blind person. So the Gemara said we'd rather include the garments of a blind person because even though he can't see it, other people can see it during the day. But pajamas, it's dark outside, the night the lights are off, you can't see it. So therefore, pajamas are not chayav and sitzis. For example, you'd have a blanket that you'd only use at night. Blankets are used generally during the day also. Talk about the main chayav and sitzis being the blanket. Um, it's used, it happens to be used during uh, the day also, um, especially you, you don't wake up at uh, before before alos. Most people, even the dominates, wake up after alos. Alos is ten, generally when the day starts. So using your blanket during the day also. So the blanket would not be considered exus It would be chayiv and sitzis. Let's hear about the base. This is really fundamental. We're here. about Women, you thought they could go to the to the western wall. And on Rosh Chodesh, and wrap the self in tzitzis. Technically, the Shulchan Aruch says they're part of, they're exempt from mitzvah from tzitzis. It's a mitzvah that is time bound. This is explicitly said in Bryce on the bot in the Kedusha and Laman Gil on the base on the bottom. Tzitzis is a mitzvah that has man grama, and presumably, and the Gemara in Menachos and Mem Gimel and Aleph links the two. Rabbi Shimon is the one who holds that says he's considered mitzvah as man grama because he darshans like we said in Sif Aleph that he excludes ksus laila that anything which is exclusively pajamas or something that would only be used at night is excluded from the mitzvah of sitzis. So the whole night time is not a time for sitzis, not a time for wearing sitzis. Um, it happens to be that sitzis are chovas gavra uh, in most respects. So they're sorry chovas on the chayfets on the garment chovas beged. Um, so therefore, if the beged is normally worn during the day, even though it's night, you'd still be chayav to put on sitzis on it. Um, but it's not a chovas gabra that it goes based on the, the time frames. But Shulchan Aruch does pass in Simen Ches that if you wear your sitzis in all night, Shavuos night, you don't take off your sitzis. You have to make another bracha. The halacha the Shulchan Aruch says the maskan is you do make a bracha, and that's really based on this that since. Pajamas, anything that's exclusively worn for the night is not considered chayav and tzitzis. It's, it's patr min tzitzis. Night in general, by extension, we say night in general is a time that's not chayav and tzitzis, even though it's a little different, but it's basically the same idea. So therefore, there's a hefsik, uh, even though you're wearing tzitzis, and the tzitzis are something you wear during the day, there's a hefsik of the night, and therefore, uh, you'd be chayav to make a new bracha in the morning, even though you didn't take it off. He does say it's a good idea to be, to mamash measure, to feel, feel them, or some people... Make the bracha on their talis gadol, the positive talis gadol. That's what a lot of people do. That's what a minute to do this. But mekar adin according to the shulchan aruch, it's not the time. Ksus la lila loves man sitzisu. 
And therefore, a woman, and avadim, avadim k'nayim are hukash la la. The Gemara always says zera shava. So therefore, women and servants avadim k'nayim are a potter from the mitzvah of sitzis because it's a mitzvah so that depends on time. And the idea is that when a mitzvah is bound by time, and you only have a limited amount of time to do it. So time is tight, and women have other obligations. They have obligations to take care of their kids, take care of their husbands. So those, if they were obligated in time-bound mitzvahs, where you have to do it in a specific time, they would have no time uh, to help out, to take care of their kid, take care of their husband. It really is a truth, is a true statement. It really, uh, people who have kids, young kids, know about this, that your time is precious, and if women start doing all these mitzvahs, then they daven chakras for three hours in the morning, they say tehillim for three hours in the morning, even though it's a great mitzvah, but it's wrong, because it's not their mitzvah, uh, their mitzvah is to take care of the kids and take care of the husband, take care of the house. That's their main mitzvah. So they're taking away from the real mitzvah. You think you're doing a mitzvah, you're not doing anything, you're not doing it right. The Mara says, If you want to take it, and uh, Ramah says the women can actually take a talus, wrap themselves in it, and and even make a brach on it. Like, what is the man grandma? Like, we're going to see later on by other mitzvahs on grandma, for example, shofar, right? A woman doesn't have to hear a shofar, but the minic is that most women hear a shofar, and they make a brach on it because the Ron says in Kiddush, and that because men are mitzvah, so it must be that women get schar for it also. I mean, as far to me, it doesn't make so much sense. If the if Torah potter, then they potter them like Gamra. He doesn't want them to do it. Um, not that they're makabal schar, they're not makabal schar. I would say the opposite. They're not makabal schar, for they're not able to do something they're not supposed to do, but. Whatever. This is what the Ran says, and this is what the the uh, the Ramah Paskins. Ach, he, he adds Mexican euro. It looks like a little arrogant for a woman to wear sitis. But the Chayin Elohim little about sitis. The Maskana is they shouldn't wear sitis. Hova Enoch Chovas Gabra, because this mitzvah is different than other mitzvahs. Shofar, for example, is a Hova on the person. So therefore, if men are mitzvah, women also get schar. But here it's not a, men in themselves are not mechuyev to wear sitis. If they're wearing a four corner garment, then they're mechuyev to put sitis on it. The whole concept of men putting on sits is a little bit arrogant because we're being mechayim and we're, we're forcing ourselves to do to put on our four corner garments so we can put sits on. You don't have to do that. When you do things you don't have to do, it seems a little arrogant. So certainly a woman who are potter from the mitzvah, that's real arrogance, they shouldn't be wearing it at all. A man doesn't have to wear it by a talus, they have a sits, even though we do. I'm assuming you tell Marsh Yeshla Talis by Arba Confos uh love show. He says in some of the it says that um, maybe you don't have to go buy it, but if you have a talus or a conifer, then you should wear it. We'll discuss more the obligation of the man, what what his obligation really is later on. Tum tum and dragon, let's say you're tum tum. Tum tum, we discussed in your bumos. Uh, you have skin covering your genitals. You don't know if you're a man or a woman. Androgynous, also a suffix. You don't have hermaphrodite. He has both male and female genitals. Chayav and misuffix. They're chayiv and suffix because they're a suffix man. Women are potter, but men are chayiv. He's out of below bracha. They should put on tzitzis because suffix del raisa. If they wear a four corner garment, they have to put tzitzis on below bracha. They shouldn't make a bracha because bracha, suffix, bracha, sahaka. Perish tumtum, lo nada, in muzakar, and a cave, and dragon, and shesh, lo zakas, and nikos, like we explained. Right? The tumtum, we don't know. And the dragon has both male and female genders. Hagel, the female genders, and the varaf, and the misses, and the misses, and the misses, because normally women, even when they're exempt, make a bracha because they get scar, like the Ron says. So too, a ton to him and dragon. He said a woman. The Ramah says a woman shouldn't wear sitzis even nowadays, and they shouldn't make a bracha. A ton to him and dragon. Us, they're at least even if on one side there might be a man. On the other side, even if they're a woman, it doesn't really make a difference so much because technically women can possibly make the bracha also. So they have enough. Reasons to wear it and to make the bracha. Also, the Ramah says I should make the bracha. Gimel katan chayodel isativ avu sarach likach lo sitzis lechancho. The Gemara says in Sukkah that at the time katan higil lechinach, katan higil lechinach that he's he's deemed uh, in in the someone who you have to teach in the mitzvos, you have to guide him and, and teach him about the mitzvos. Higil uh, lechinach, he's reached that time. It depends on every on every mitzvah. Um, so by sitzes, it depends if he knows how to wrap himself. And the sitzes, like I said yesterday, was on a blanket. Uh, we talked about the shear yesterday. It depends on actually a cotton himself. I was talking about the And the Mishabur does mention it. 
It's a shear that, that can cover a katan, robe over, ro, robe over Rosho, most of his body and his head. That is a shear, um, and he knows how to wrap himself around it. I don't know what age this is that he knows how to wrap himself. My daughter last asked me to cover her. Both my daughters asked me to cover her. My oldest daughter is four years old. So apparently she can't cover herself. <laughs> when the kid knows how to cover himself with a blanket, I don't know, five, six, I'll tell you, I don't, I'm don't. i not there yet. I don't know my daughter's four. She still asked me to cover her with a blanket. When they ought to do it, obviously if she's a girl, but if it's a boy, then Mikhail to buy him tzitzis. He has to know, like we said, he's supposed to put two strings in front of you, two two of the fringes in front of you, and turn him back of you. I don't know where the Ramah gets it. It says he gets from the Mordechai at the end of Lulav HaGazal, He has to be able to hold uh, the tzitzis in his hands. Bashas Kriyashma. It doesn't say he has to actually kiss them, Bashas Kriyashma. There's a young, the video of a young me, I think I was like five or six years old. I think I was the head, I was like the Shabbos Abba or something like that, I was the father, and I had the crown on my head, and there's a video my parents took, and they say, we were saying Kriyashma or whatever, and I put my hand, I did Kriyashma the right way, I put my hand on my face. And then I took out my scissors, and everyone else took them out and they kissed them. But I, I just took them out, and I didn't kiss them. I just tucked them back in my pants. I made sure they were in. I want make sure they were in my pants. <laughs> I didn't want them to be sticking out. So if you heard my other share about whether you're supposed to put your scissors in or out, I made sure when I was six or seven years old to make sure they were in. But I did take them out for creation, but I didn't kiss them. So rather than say he doesn't have to kiss them, you have to know how to. Hold them in your hand, Vishal's Kriyashma, not actually kiss them. I don't know this last part where it comes from. I don't know why this is relevant. The word just says, Katan Adel is Zate. If he knows how to, he knows how to cover himself with the talis. Uh, I don't know where the Ramah gets these things from, but it seems to be that this is what the Ramah says. So this is how we follow. Stick around for Enoch Ben Sion. We'll talk more about the concept of woman being Chayiv in the midst of Sittis and shed some light into is there really a Chayiv for a woman to wear Sittis or not? Maybe it's not so posh. See you there. Bye.